Greetings again everyone and welcome to our online service as we gather in many different places to worship one God with one heart. We're going to begin with a call to worship that's based on today's set psalm, Psalm 19, as well as a few verses from Luke chapter 4. As always, this is responsive. Please say the larger print after I read the smaller. This day is holy to our God. Do not mourn or weep. The Spirit of God is upon us to bring good news to the poor. This day is holy to our God, for the joy of the Holy One is our strength. God sends us to proclaim release to the captives, recovery of sight to the blind, and justice to the oppressed. On this day, may the scripture be fulfilled in our hearing. May the words of our mouths and the meditations of our hearts be pleasant to you, Holy One, our Rock and our Redeemer. I light our Christ candle and I remember that sometimes we struggle to see the big picture in our lives, but it is the light of the world that can help us see into all the corners. We thank Jesus Christ for being that light of the world. And now we're going to pray to God and we're going to pray together. This is our prayer of approach. Let us pray. God of creation, your heavens and earth shout out the amazing news of your power and glory. God of justice, your laws of mercy and goodness reveal your vision of harmony for all people. God of love, your Son Jesus Christ proclaims the amazing news of your liberation for all who are hungry, poor or oppressed. May we join with all of creation to become your message of love to the world. Amen. I have plenty of good news to share with you this week. Let's begin with the birthdays and I have three to mention. The first is on Tuesday the 25th and that's May Tab, who you'll often see wandering the streets of Orono and if you do, wish her a very happy birthday and congratulations. Then next Saturday the 29th, it's Linda Hansen's birthday. Congratulations, Linda, and thanks for all that you've done for our church over the years. And then the same day, that Saturday the 29th, it's my wife's birthday, and I really mustn't forget that one. I can't really tell you how old she's going to be, but let's just say the last digit is fairly circular. But Alison, don't worry, however old that makes you feel, you'll always be younger than me. I'll try and celebrate your birthday in style with you, COVID permitting. I also have good news about a new arrival. Marion Wellman has just become a great grandmother again. We have the arrival of Luna Emma, who weighed seven pounds and 13 ounces. That's a good size because she is a brother for Archer. And if you remember when Archer was born, he was very early and he was only one pound eight ounces. In fact, when he was released from hospital, he had gained enough weight to be the same weight that Luna Emma was when she was born. Isn't she incredibly cute? So congratulations to you, Marion, and to your family on this new arrival of Luna Emma. Last week we heard a passage from the first letter to the Corinthians. 
This week we're going to continue from where we left off. In fact, we'll hear the 12th verse again. This is the first letter to the Corinthians, chapter 12, reading verses 12 to 31. Just as a body, though one, has many parts, but all its many parts form one body, so it is with Christ. For we were all baptized by one Spirit so as to form one body, whether Jews or Gentiles, slave or free, and we were all given the one Spirit to drink, and so the body is not made up of one part, but of many. Now, if the foot should say, Because I am not a hand, I do not belong to the body, it would not for that reason stop being part of the body. And if the ear should say, Because I am not an eye, I do not belong to the body, it would not for that reason stop being part of the body. If the whole body were an eye, where would the sense of hearing be? If the whole body were an ear, where would the sense of smell be? But in fact, God has placed the parts in the body, every one of them, just as he wanted them to be. If they were all one part, where would the body be? As it is, there are many parts, but one body. The eye cannot say to the hand, I don't need you. And the head cannot say to the feet, I don't need you. On the contrary, those parts of the body that seem to be weaker are indispensable. And the parts that we think are less honourable, we treat with special honour. And the parts that are unpresentable are treated with special modesty while our presentable parts need no special treatment. But God has put the body together, giving greater honour to the parts that lacked it, so that there should be no division in the body, but that its parts should have equal concern for each other. If one part suffers, every part suffers with it. If one part is honoured, every part rejoices with it. Now, you are the body of Christ, and each one of you is a part of it. And God has placed in the church, first of all, apostles, second, prophets, third, teachers, then miracles, then gifts of healing, of helping, of guidance, and of different kinds of tongues. Are all apostles? Are all prophets? Are all teachers? Do all work miracles? Do all have gifts of healing? Do all speak in tongues? Do all interpret? now eagerly desire the greater gifts. And now we're going to turn to the Gospel. This week it's Luke's Gospel, and we're going to hear from chapter 4 and verses 14 to 21. Jesus returned to Galilee in the power of the Spirit and news about him spread through the whole countryside. He was teaching in their synagogues, and everyone praised him. He went to Nazareth, where he had been brought up. And on the Sabbath day, he went into the synagogue, as was his custom. He stood up to read, and the scroll of the prophet Isaiah was handed to him. Unrolling it, he found the place where it is written, the Spirit of the Lord is on me, because he has anointed me to proclaim good news to the poor. He has sent me to proclaim freedom for the prisoners and recovery of sight for the blind, to set the oppressed free, to proclaim the year of the Lord's favour. Then he rolled up the scroll, gave it back to the attendant and sat down. The eyes of everyone in the synagogue were fastened on him. He began by saying to them, Today, this scripture is fulfilled in your hearing. Now I invite you to join me in saying the Lord's Prayer. Let's do this together. Our Father who art in heaven, Hallowed be thy name, thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, 
and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power and the glory, for ever and ever. Amen. We now come to that moment in the service when we're going to ask God to wipe clean the slate of mistakes that we've put together this past week. God knows that we are human, that we make mistakes, and God freely forgives if we just ask. Let's do that together as we pray. Dear God, sometimes we are too good at talking. We talk about justice, but our actions bring poverty and oppression to those we claim to serve. We talk about our deep love for you, but we come up short when it's time to show love for those who make us uncomfortable. We talk about our commitment to serve others, but our busy lives make it hard to find the time to act as your disciples. God, help us turn our words into actions, that our very lives may become the message of love you have called us to proclaim. Amen. The power of the living God transforms our hearts of stone into hearts of gladness and song. The power of the living Christ brings light and salvation to those who turn to God. Hallelujah. Amen. I don't often use the set psalm as one of our scripture readings. So this week, our anthem is going to be a song based on the set psalm. This is Jess Ray singing her interpretation of the 19th psalm. Purify my heart May every word Every thought, every motive, every intention be pleasing in your sight, God. For your voice refreshes my soul, brings joy to my heart, and light to my eyes. Your Precious than gold, sweeter than honey, better than life. Purify my heart, may every word and every thought, every motive and every
Recently, I was in one of the local funeral homes. Now, of course, if I'm there, it's for a somber occasion, but I also do see something that gives me great pleasure. On the walls of the funeral home, they have some pieces of art. These are paintings by Johannes Boots, whose work I really enjoy and admire. Boots is a Dutch immigrant who came over as a, as a child with his parents in the 60s. In 1981, he opened his first art store in Bowmanville, where he would do anything, paint anything, produce anything that he could use to pay the bills. Now he's a very fine artist indeed. If you've seen his art, you will know that many of his works reflect the oneness of humanity with the nature that surrounds us. The art in the funeral home features something that he did quite often. He hid figures in the picture that you have to work to pick out. You have to look hard to see what's actually in the picture. It makes you really study his work and it makes you think. It seems to me it's really clever. Here, for example, is a work of his called Gratitude. Your eyes are drawn straight away to the young native woman who is offering her thanks to the Creator by burning what I imagine is sweet grass or perhaps tobacco. But there is so much more in this picture. Look carefully at it. Over here, you quickly come to notice that what at first sight you thought were rocks is in fact a woman lying on her back in the water in oneness with her surroundings. And up in the branches above her is an owl. And over in the other tree, there is a raccoon hiding. And there's a deer built into the trunk. Much harder to make out is a moose hidden in the distance. Not easy to hide a moose, but Boots has done it. At the base of the tree is a fox. Lying nearby is a big bear with a coyote and an otter and a rabbit. The shoreline is actually a face and part of the face is a beaver. And there's a turtle. In the water there is a heron. Now is that everything in this picture? Well I'm not so sure. I wouldn't be at all surprised if there's more and I will keep looking. That's one of the things I like about his work. They make you feel as if you are still missing something, that there is something you just haven't spotted yet, that there's more. And that I think is how the people in the synagogue might have been feeling about what happened in our gospel reading today. In front of them, they saw exactly what they expected. A man in their synagogue, reading from the scripture, and then teaching about it. It's what happens in a synagogue. But there was so much more in the picture that they could not yet see. If only they'd looked more closely. They must surely have sensed that there was more to what they were seeing but they just hadn't spotted it yet. This wasn't just a man. This was the Creator. Someone with true oneness with creation and true oneness with God and true oneness with humanity. The Spirit of the Lord is on me, he said. And he concluded by telling them, Today, this scripture is fulfilled in your hearing. 
Next week we will hear how the locals reacted to this, but let's just say they didn't see the picture as they should have. They missed out on what the scene in front of them was hiding, of what it was trying to tell them. The truth remained hidden from them. So first I want to ask you, are you seeing the true Jesus in your life? Or are you missing out on all the details that are hidden in his teaching? Do you just see what you want to see? Or have you made the effort to look more deeply into what is waiting there for you to find? Some people look at this picture and all they ever see is the woman giving thanks to the Creator. It's a fine picture of her, well painted and truly worth looking at. But it's not wrong to just admire the artist for his portrayal of her. It's not wrong. It's a good picture. But there's so much more. In fact, as I've been writing this message, I just noticed something else. Sometimes you even have to look at what has not been painted as well as what has. Look, I've just realized that the gap in these branches here is in fact representing an eagle swooping down talons first. There's so much more to see than you first think. And there is so much more to Jesus than the worshippers in the synagogue that day saw. And however strong your faith is, there is always so much more to see in Jesus. He's full of surprises, and sometimes you will see things you never expected. So never stop trying to study who Jesus is to you. He's like a Johannes Boots painting, only much, much bigger. And sometimes I think the more that you know about Jesus, the more there is left for you to discover. You just have to make an effort. So don't settle for just seeing the obvious in the picture of your life. Look for the hidden details that you haven't yet spotted. And once you've discovered something new, do what the young lady is doing. Give thanks to the Creator for all the wonders to be found. You don't have to burn sweet grass as this woman is doing, unless that is your way. You can give thanks by making more room in your heart for God and for those whom God has placed in your life. You can give thanks by opening yourself up to a much bigger idea of who God is than you ever imagined. And finally, one more point, a challenge. Remember, it may be in you and your life that someone might come looking to see more about Jesus. That is an awesome responsibility. What will people who know you to be a Christian see in your life when they study you more closely? And they surely will. May they see in you a vision of who the Creator is to all of us, and may they learn that there is much, much more than they ever imagined. Amen. Thank you.
I invite you now to bring to mind those who are weighing heavily upon your hearts, those that you wish to pray for, those who perhaps need a word of healing or of guidance or of caring and compassion. Let's pray and I will leave a gap in which you can raise those names up to God. So let us pray. Eternal God, you are the maker of us all, and we are your creation, people formed in your image, as individuals and as a community. We're worshipping you today in recognition of your calling, of your caring to invite us to share in your creative and healing work. We're here because we have heard you speak in us and through others. Help us, Lord, to always respond to you and your invitation to your grace. God of all our moments of our days and our nights, you speak and you act in the world around us, not only to call all people to you, but also to direct and guide us in ways of healing and wholeness. Awaken us, Lord, to what you would say to us. Help us to open our ears to your words and open our eyes to see the bigger picture of just who you are and how magnificent you are. Open our hearts to your presence. Help us to know when it is your voice we are hearing and when it is our own prejudices and desires to which we are listening. Lord, we pray that your church may rise up with renewed commitment in answer to your call, that your people may be instruments of your grace and love. We pray now for those who consider themselves inadequate and dismiss or avoid your calling in their lives. Give them a new vision a vision in which you are their strength and their hope. We pray for those who, in answering your call, must leave the known for the unknown, the comfortable for the uncertain. Grant them courage and steadfast faith. We pray today too, Lord, for those in want and need for those of us and in our community who suffer in body, mind or soul. Hear us now as we raise them up to you. Loving God, bless us all with an abundant faith, a fruitful ministry, a joyful life. Bless us and all those who gather today around the world to continue the work of Jesus, who came to heal us and save us and deliver us all. Amen. It's time for me to close with a blessing. Go from here with open ears and eyes, awaiting the ongoing revelation of just who Jesus is as he invites you to come and see. May God strengthen you, guide your steps, and put a new song into your heart. And go in peace knowing God goes with you. Amen. Oh
Oh